Welcome to Toffee TV. Well, Ruben Fenagri has been linked heavily with a move to Everton on loan to be a possible backup left back. Or, or well, I mean, listen, it doesn't have to be a backup. He could be, he could be in contention for starting, and that's what we're going to have a little look at. He's currently at uh, Sporting Lisbon. Uh, played in the Premier League with Wolves. Um, do you think? Do you think he's good enough, Baz? Do you think he's good enough to get into the Everton's first team? Um, I don't know, is the answer. Mm. Played 30, 35 games or something for Wolves over over his career at Wolves. He was there for five years. Um, I don't know. He's obviously a decent footballer, but it's very much a backup. For, mm. for Michalenko, in my opinion. Mm. Frank Lampard, Kevin Thelwell, obviously, they've had a look at Niels and Kunku. Seems like they've made their mind up on him. Yeah. That he's not he's not going to be good enough. Um, we're, we're well covered at right back, aren't we? We've got Patterson, we've got Coleman, Mason Holgate can play there, Ben Goffrey can play there at a push. I know Goffrey can play on the left as well, mm. but we, showed, we saw last season that when Luca Demon out the side and then Michalenko wasn't quite up to speed. We had like John Joe Kenny out there, we've had Coleman out there. There's no output whatsoever. Well, we had Ben Godfrey out there as well. Ben Godfrey the year before. There's no output mm -hmm. from that side because they're not naturally left footed. So it makes sense from that perspective that you can get him in on low, um, relatively low wages. He can come in and, and battle, I guess, keeps Michalenko on his toes, but also. Mm. I think you've mentioned it a couple of times with the five subs. It gives you that option of maybe either shoring something up or if if Michalenko was tired or whatever, if he's nursing an injury or if he's on a booking, you've mm. got a safety sub there, then having you to be able to swap him out or whatever. And, and we haven't really had that luxury. Um, mm. The squad is thin in places and quite clearly Everton and, and Frank Lampard have thought that Left back is an area where they need another player because they are they're well covered at centre back. They're well covered at right back, like I've just said, and it, it is that left side mm. where I thought Nkunku would be given certainly till Christmas, but maybe the managers looked at him and gone, he's not quite where we want him to be. So it'll be interesting what happens with him. Do Everton try to did he give him a new contract mm. and give him another loan, or did he try to sell him this summer because he's only got. I think 11 months left on his deal. Yeah, I, I think uh, in terms of a deal, I think for me it, it is that safety element first. Ben Godfrey was, uh, you know, played as a backup left back at times over the last couple of years. Um, you'd want him now to settle down in the, in a centre back role, yeah, you know, whether it's in a two or in a three or whatever. You know, you want people who can do the job properly. I think. And I think if he does come in, I think that gives us, like you just said, cover in, in all aspects. Then, and Kunku, I just don't, I just think he's defensively he's all over the place. He's more I think. of an attacker, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. But I just think defensively he doesn't have, just doesn't have that real idea how to, how to defend properly. Mm. Um, so I think there's a little bit of experience there, even though he's only what twenty three. There's a little bit of experience there playing in the Premier League. Uh, playing in, I think he's played games in the Champions League as well, and it just it just seems for a loan. It's it just it does make sense. It does make sense to me. Um, as I said, whether it comes off or not, we'll wait and see. But it does make sense just in that short term, and you know, it's, it's a, don't we don't you know bringing him in. We can have a look at him, make sure that he's up to speed. What we you know, Kevin Farewell. Obviously, was at Wolves, so we love know knowing all about him. So it'll be interesting to see whether we pull it off and and then what the knock on effect is with 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 Nas and Kunku. I think it's always as well. It's always good to freshen the squad up mm. anyway to get other players in there. Um, I think you don't. I'm slightly underwhelmed at the moment. Oh yeah, because yeah. it's not an area where <clears throat> we're looking at and going mm. right. He's a starter, and we yeah. needed that. Um, so it makes you, it, it is a little bit underwhelming from that perspective. But if you look at the whole thing, it kind of does make sense. You're right, Thelwell. There's, there's work with him at Wolves, knows about his character, knows what he is. Mm. 
Um, he did play some Champions League games last season. I think he played 18 times overall for Sporting. They've took the option on him and bought him the other week and are now sending him mm. on loan, which is a bit of a strange one. And then is, yeah. also putting a clause, an option in his contract to, to be bought for the same amount of money they paid mm. for him, which that's what the reports seem to be, which is a bit strange as well. But this Neverton could take him for a year and decide. Yeah. Maybe they would say they be yeah. decide he's not he's not what we need. It, it gives them a year to look at him. Mm. It also gives them a year to identify another left back who can come mm. in if if he's not up to speed. Um and and like you just said, we might find out a bit more about him Kunku. So it's squad depth, twenty three good days, not being capped by Portugal at full level yet, but was was capped at every level below mm. the full national team. Um, to never scored a career goal. So, yeah. Also, you know, listen, might do for us. Maybe. The last Portuguese left back we had was pretty good. He was good. He pretty was good, good new enough. Good old new enough. So, but, um, let's just have a look at um, his numbers from mm -hmm. last season. So he played 14 times in the league, uh, no goals, one assist, tackles, 1.1 per game, and his cross accuracy was. Can't tell. Looks like eleven percent. Eleven percent it was. Yeah, eleven. Eleven percent. Let's just compare that to uh, Michalenko's from last season. So sixteen Premier League games, one goal, zero assists, one point nine tackle. So better in the tackle and the cross accuracy twenty percent, mm -hmm. almost double. So yeah. So so if you're talking about starters straight away, you're looking at Michalenko and he's got much better numbers. And that's fair enough because he will be the, the starter and mm. if this kid comes in he, he will be the backup and um you've got to you have you know you've got to have two players per, per position, haven't you? In you, this idea of players f floating around. When you've got a squ small squad, we've seen this last season, what what tends to happen is you go, Sam, they can play in that position and then someone else gets injured or they get injured mm. and suddenly before you know it you're looking at your numbers and you're looking at your positions and you're like, you find, you know, you mentioned John Joe Kenny playing left back for us last season and, you know, he was the back up, one, the third choice right back and then ends up playing left back and you need players who can play in that position as the back up. I think especially for left footers mm. from on the left side, it's so important yeah. to, to be able to put deliveries into the box. Mm. It just takes away half your attacking game. You're breaking quickly. You've got to stop and put it back onto your right foot. Yeah. Teams get set and all that. And there's not enough left footers in our squad anyway. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, neither of them, him or Michalenko, are at Luka Dean's creativity no, level, are they? No. And that's, we're still missing that, really. Mm. Um, and that's something cert certainly Michalenko's got to improve this season and, and obviously we saw him the other day scoring a lovely volley mm. at Blackpool and that's the kind of thing he's got to do. Mm. You know, he had a, go a goal and an assist on Sunday, didn't mm. he, against Blackpool. It's what he's got to do, get himself high yeah. up the pitch and this, this fella, if he gets his opportunity, he's got to do exactly the same, get high up the pitch, get deliveries mm. into the penalty area for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And if, you know, he could become a player that mm. is is helpful to Frank Lampard. That's all it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's it's not the most glamorous. Wouldn't be the most glamorous signings in the no. world. It's not what we're all we're all clamouring for, you know, midfielder or a striker or whatever. But in terms of the squad, it would be an improvement, I think. And you're right, absolutely spot on. There's, there aren't too many left footers in there either. So suddenly, they're having the choice of a, having another one who can come into the team, mm -hmm. and you're not just sticking a right footer in there. It's, it's, it's a completely different, you know, completely different side, isn't it? So. We'll wait and see, wait and see what happens with any potential deal. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, uh, your thoughts on them. If you've watched them, let us know your thoughts on them. Any Wolves fans, any Sporting Lisbon fans, let us know your thoughts on the player mm -hmm. himself. Would he improve Everton? Tell us in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more videos, exclusive videos, daily live videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description and it'll be on the screen in a moment. See you later.